Hi, my name is Alan Madden. I'm a chartered accountant and a tax expert in the Toronto, Oakville and Mississauga regions of Ontario, Canada. Today's video is about Canadians working abroad and taxes. This video is going to be broken down into two parts, Canadians permanently working abroad and taxes and Canadians temporarily working abroad and taxes. Let's talk about those who are permanently working abroad first. The first thing that you need to do as a Canadian who is permanently working overseas is determine your residency status. Are you a resident of Canada or are you a non-resident of Canada? The CRA looks at three primary factors when determining your Canadian residency status. Number one, where is your permanent home located? Number two, where is your spouse and or common law partner located? Where are your children? And number three, where are your material personal possessions located? Let's take the example of John Smith, who left Canada 13 years ago to work and live in the United States. His permanent home, number one, is in the United States. His wife and two children, number two, are in the United States. And his material personal possessions, number three, are in the United States. Material personal possessions for John are his car, his boat, his major household appliances, and so forth. In this case, John Smith is clearly a non-resident of Canada. The secondary factors that the Canada Revenue Agency looks to when determining whether or not you are or are not a resident of Canada are Canadian driver's license, Canadian bank account and credit cards, health insurance card, for example, your OHIP card. If you maintain all of the above, you are likely going to be considered a resident for Canadian tax purposes. So now that we've talked about what the factors are for determining your residency status, what happens when you leave Canada? There are six things that you need to do as a Canadian working abroad when or before you leave Canada. Number one, you need to file a departure tax return. A departure tax return is like a personal tax return due on April 30th, but it has a few special forms attached to it. On your departure tax return, it's really important that you indicate that you emigrate the date that you emigrated from Canada that is the date that you left Canada. Number two, you could file form NR73, Determination of Residency Status Upon Leaving Canada. It's not mandatory to file this form with the Canada Revenue Agency. However, as a Canadian working abroad, you may want to complete this several page questionnaire and submit it to the CRA for processing. That's because once the CRA has processed it, they will give you a determination in writing as to whether you are a resident of Canada or whether you are a non-resident of Canada. So you're not left in limbo guessing. Number three, you must tell the CRA that you no longer want to receive payments or credits for GST, the Canada Child Tax Benefit, and the Universal Child Care Benefit. If you don't do this and you continue to work abroad and receive these payments, and if the CRA finds out, you will end up having to pay all of that money back, plus interest, plus penalties. That's something that you certainly want to avoid. The fourth thing that you need to do when you leave Canada is that you must tell the CRA a complete list of all of the Canadian assets that you own immediately prior to departure. Pardon me, that's Canadian and foreign assets immediately prior to departure. You have to provide a description of those assets and the fair market value of those assets at the time that you left. You're not required to file this form if the total assets that you own are less than $25,000 in value when you leave. Now, if you don't file this form, the CRA will levy a significant penalty of $2,500. From practical experience, I have seen the CRA level this penalty every chance that they get. The reality is we're in a deficit and the CRA is looking for ways to increase the revenue base. 
The fifth thing that you need to do when you leave Canada to another country is pay departure tax. Departure tax is payable on the disposition of the assets. Now, let me explain. When you leave Canada and become a non-resident, you are deemed to dispose of all of your assets at their fair market value, and you must pay tax on the accrued gains. Certain assets are exempt from departure tax, like your home, RSPs, and RIFs. The sixth and final thing that you need to do when you leave Canada as a Canadian working abroad is you must speak with your financial advisor. You should tell your financial advisor that you have become a non-resident, the date you, become a non you became a non-resident, and that you want to receive non-resident tax slips from all the financial institutions and mutual fund companies and stock brokerages that you do business with. There are special non-resident tax slips for investment income that will be given to you. You should tell your financial advisor that you no longer want to contribute to your RSP. And you should tell your financial advisor that you want to stop contributing to the tax-free savings account because you're no longer permitted to do so once you become a non-resident. Now that we've talked about the six things that you need to do immediately leaving Canada, what are your filing obligations after you leave Canada? Do you have to file a tax return, for example? You only have to file a tax return as a Canadian permanently working abroad in three specific circumstances. Number one, you earned employment income in Canada. Number two, you carried on a business income in Canada. Number three, you disposed of taxable Canadian property, such as real estate properties. Other than those three specific circumstances, you are generally not required to file a Canadian income tax return after you leave Canada. And that's the good news. After you leave Canada, you will be subject to withholding tax. Withholding tax is applied at a rate of 25% on the Canadian source income that you receive. These items include interest, dividends, CPP, old age security and pension, RSP income, and rents from real estate property. Let's take an example. You're a Canadian working abroad and you have $10,000 in Canada savings bonds that pay you a gracious 10% of interest or $1,000 per year. Probably unrealistic. But if that's the case, the Canadian bank would be required to withhold 25% or $250 from that $1,000 you receive and remit that to the Canada Revenue Agency. This is known as withholding tax. You should look to the tax treaty that Canada has with the country where you're living to see if you can get tax relief. For example, if you are living in the United States, the withholding tax imposed on dividends is 15%. That's it. If you are living in the United States, the withholding tax on interest received from Canadian banks and financial institutions is zero. If you're living in the United States and you receive Canada pension plan payments, the withholding tax rate is zero, which is far better than 25%. The second part of this video is going to deal with Canadians who are temporarily living abroad. If you are temporarily living abroad, you are considered a factual resident of Canada because of your residential and personal ties to Canada. You may be a factual resident of Canada under the following circumstances. You worked temporarily outside of Canada. Number two, you teach or attend a school outside of Canada. Number three, you commute daily or weekly to work in the United States. Number four, you regularly vacation outside of Canada. So what are your filing obligations, your Canadian filing obligations as a person who is temporarily living outside of Canada? Well, you still have to file a regular personal tax return, which is due on April 30th. You still have to pay tax on your worldwide income. Now, worldwide income is income earned inside Canada and income earned outside of Canada. You have to claim all deductions and tax credits, just like all other Canadians. And you have to pay both federal and provincial tax. 
The perfect example of a Canadian who is temporarily living outside of Canada can be seen in this example. John Smith is transferred to Hong Kong for a period of 18 months by his employer. He's leaving his spouse and children behind and he's still maintaining his permanent home in Canada. He's temporarily renting accommodation which is provided by his employer in Hong Kong for that 18 month period. In this case, John Smith is clearly a factual resident of Canada and he is subject to tax on his worldwide income. That's the income earned in Hong Kong and the income earned in Canada, if any. Now, that brings me to my next point, foreign tax credits. You may be thinking that as a Canadian temporarily working abroad, you're subject to double taxation because you have to pay tax in the country where you're working and you also have to pay tax on that same income in Canada. Well, you're right, but fortunately, the Canada Income Tax Act does provide tax relief by the way of a foreign tax credit. You can claim a foreign tax credit on the income taxes that you paid in the foreign country on the foreign income earned. The foreign tax credit is a lesser of two amounts. Number one, the actual tax that you pay on the foreign source income, and number two, the Canadian tax payable on that foreign source income. So if you're working in a country that is a very high tax jurisdiction, you most likely will get all of the foreign taxes credited back to you on your personal Canadian income tax return. The last point I'm going to address for Canadians who are temporarily working abroad is the Overseas Employment Tax Credit. This is a very lucrative tax credit that you may be able to get. To qualify for the Overseas Tax Credit, you must be working for a Canadian employer and you must be working overseas for a period of at least six months or more. Thirdly, to qualify for this credit, you must be working in one of the following industries. Number one, explore, exploring for petroleum, natural gas, minerals, or similar resources. Number two, construction, installation, agriculture, or engineering work. Number three, you're working for the United Nations. I hope that you found this video useful. To get more free tax tips and great advice, please visit my website, maddenca.com, which is shown at the bottom of this video. Also get access to my free report, 20 free tax secrets on how to beat the tax man, the URL for which is shown at the end of this video. So go ahead, visit my website, get access to your free report, and save yourself a ton in taxes. Thanks for watching.